Hi everyone, this is Andrew Tsai, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm gonna to tell you why you should support this piece of software if you care about the future of gaming on a Mac. If you haven't subscribed already, then please consider subscribing. Only 8% of you are currently subscribed and it'll be great to see this number go up. If you do press the subscribe button, you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac gaming news. So if you didn't already know, Codeweavers created the software Crossover and they are the only company that really cares about freeing games from their walled gardens and restrictive DRMs. And today I'm going to tell you how each purchase of Crossover is not only a donation to the open source Wine project, but will also support the future of gaming on a Mac. And please make sure to watch until the end of the video. I'm going to show you one little trick which is going to give you a 50% discount from your Crossover license. So if you're familiar with my channel, you'll know that Crossover is one of the few methods for running Windows games on the Apple Silicon Mac. And that's because when Apple changed their CPU architecture of their Macs from Intel's x86 platform to their own Apple Silicon M1 chips, this made running Windows natively through bootcamp impossible. Now you can virtualize Windows through something like Parallels and this does work for games. However, your system is restricted to using only half of the CPU cores and half of the RAM. That's because the other half must be dedicated to running the virtual machine. However, when you're running Windows games through Crossover, you can access 100% of your Mac's resources. This is because Crossover can translate Windows API calls directly into macOS API calls, and this is all thanks to something called Wine. So Wine is the free and open source project which allows Windows games and applications to run on the macOS and Linux operating systems. And this sounds very similar to what Crossover does. And that's because Codeweavers and Wine are very closely linked together. Did you know that 70% of Codeweavers developers are actually Wine developers? And Codeweavers staff have contributed to over 50% of all commits to the Wine project. And this is despite the fact that Codeweavers only make up 4% of all Wine authors. Codeweavers do most of the heavy lifting. That means that the bulk of the money that Mac gamers spend on Crossover is reinvested back into the Wine project. In a recent email exchange I had with Jeremy White, the CEO of Codeweavers, he described Codeweavers' Wine First policy. And he said that starting in about 2003, we shifted so that when we work on Wine, we put it into the public Wine tree first. We then take it from there, polish it, and ship it as Crossover. In some ways, we are our own worst enemy, but it means we never hold anything hostage. This means that the bulk of the money spent on Crossover and on Codeweavers goes directly back into the Wine project. And the Wine project is really important because it frees games from the tyranny of walled gardens, whether it's proprietary game launchers, intrusive DRM, or even anti-cheat software that excludes games running on alternative operating systems. And Codeweavers are on a mission to get as many Windows games and applications working on alternate operating systems like macOS and Linux. Now I'm gonna be the first to admit that Crossover isn't perfect. Many games do not function nearly as well as they do natively on Windows, and that's partly to do with the huge technical challenges that Codeweavers face. For example, Apple constantly changed the goalposts for what is allowed to run on a Mac. For example, in recent years, Apple has deprecated OpenGL, they've removed support for 32-bit games and applications, and these alone made thousands of working games incompatible overnight. However, the future is looking bright. Crossover version 22 is going to be released very soon and will integrate Wine version 7.0, which is going to hugely improve performance with 32-bit games. According to Jeremy White, Crossover 22 is going to see a dramatic expansion in the range of games that play well on a Mac, not just more titles, but better performance as well. Furthermore, Codeweavers are making great progress on DirectX 12 support, which they anticipate will be released in Crossover 23 next year. To achieve this, Codeweavers will have to grapple with Apple's Metal API and push it way beyond its originally designed limits. And if they succeed, it's going to be a technical marvel. So if you are interested in gaming on a Mac and you want to see more titles become supported on Mac hardware, then it's really in your best interest to support companies like Codeweavers. So if you do want to help out and support Mac Gaming and Crossover and the Wine project, then please make sure to click the link at the top of the description. Once you get to the purchase page, you can enter the promo code Apple Gaming Wiki and you'll receive a 25% discount. Every time you make a purchase through my link, I'll also receive a cut and you'll be helping to support the work that I do. Also, if you want to find out how to get 50% off your renewal of Crossover, then all you need to do is to log into your account on the Codeweavers website, click on my account, then click on support licenses, and then click the renew now button. 
This will automatically apply a 50% discount on every renewal. And if you want, you can also do this for multiple years. Just make sure to click my affiliate link before you do this renewal process and you'll be helping to support my channel as well. So Code Weavers not only developed Wine and Crossover, they're also responsible for Proton. This is a similar Wine-based compatibility layer, which is designed for the Linux operating system and has been developed in cooperation with Valve. And this is the main piece of technology which is gonna allow Windows games to run on Linux and also the Steam Deck as well. And this is something I'm gonna be making videos about in the very near future once I get my hands on my own Steam Deck. So if you're interested in hearing more about this, then please subscribe to my channel for future Steam Deck news. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you liked the video, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.